It's awesome to be here again, it really is. Um, just one thing about doing a job like I do, you get to meet the most extraordinary people you know, all over the world. And I always think about what Spirit says, is that whenever you meet someone, you're meeting yourself. So I'm meeting all these aspects of myself. So I hope I'm going to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> and behave yourself. <laughs> anyway, I'll be looking forward to talking to you through the day. And no, not just through Tabash, but as Blair as well. So thank you for making this effort to you know, participate in this. And you know, at the end of the day, we're all one big soul family. So you know, I bless you and love you. Thank you. Yes. I've been channeling spirit for over 30 years now. In the last seminar I did, I was watching one of the other speakers and he was unloading all these paraphernalia that he brought with him to do his presentation. And he was setting up his table and his screens and stuff like that. And he was sort of looked at me and he says, well, what did you do to prepare? You know, because he obviously saw I didn't have anything with me. And I said, well, I got here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly true because I've done no preparation. I never do. Tabash just decides at the time what he's going to talk about. So, you know, I've known that this has been happening for some time and obviously some people will be making their notes and all that sort of stuff, but um, as I say, I just get here. And I think that's a massive undertaking in really trusting that what you're doing is actually happening. And I mean, I never freak out or anything like that because I have this uh, astounding connection with Source. And over 34 years, you know, it's just always there. You know, being a channel for spirit, it's that constant connection with source all the time. You know, people have often said to me, how does Tabash talk to you? And he's just there, it's just a, a conscious, a constant conscious presence that's just within me all of the time. You know, he'll tell me, he'll pass the time of day with me. You know, he'll tell me what to wear, he'll tell me what to eat sometimes. I don't necessarily agree with them, but it's just imagine having, I don't know, the best way I'm going to put it is imagine having God just walking with you all of the time and just, just being in that state of being. I just feel very blessed to be able to you know, do the work that I actually do. Tabash is a, is a soul who came from an area called Sumeria. Sumeria today is where Iraq and Iran are. When Tabash lived, it was the ancient Mesopotamian Empire. And this was about 5000 BC. He was a man of his time. He was not a big guru or teacher or healer or anything of that nature. He had a wife, who well, actually had several wives. He had <laughs> wives, job, children. But as he explained to me, he became aware that we are mind, body, spirit. Obviously, our souls, before we had any incarnations in body, knew each other out there and we decided to make an agreement in this incarnation to you know, do the work that we do. It's obviously changed my life. It's still changing my life all of the time because it evolves you know, all the time. And it's one thing I've realized in all the years I've done this, Regardless of what your roles are in your life, whether you're a spiritual channel or an IT manager or you know whoever, it's just your evolution. And and so we're all teaching each other through our lives, through our just day-to-day -day lives. We don't have to set ourselves up in some massive way. And I think in all the thousands of people I've talked to over the years, people believe that they have to somehow put aside their human experiences or the human nature to become more spiritual whereas in fact we just become gods more directing our human nature in more specific ways so it's actually really really important that we enjoy the aspects of our human nature in my first book don't change the channel i wrote at the end being a spiritual being doesn't mean you stop being a human being and in my second book which is about to be published called who catharted <clears throat> <laughs> I never come up with the titles, Spirit does. <laughs> when I was in Christchurch in New Zealand, and when I decided to write my first book, and I asked Spirit for a title, and straight away they gave it to me, don't change the channel. 
And I just burst out laughing. Anyway, when I was looking for a title for the second book, and I'm sort of sitting up, coming up with all these boring things, the spirit was like, oh, it's boring, you don't want to do that. And I said, well, you guys come up with one. So that's what they came up with, who cathartered. <laughs> so, <laughs> if anything, the title will get people's attention. So, <clears throat> But, yeah, the second book's just uh, a whole lot of stories that... I've written about experiences I've actually had. And I just want to share one with you, which was very poignant. And it was actually the first one. And it was, this is crazy. Okay, I went, I went to this hypnotherapy show. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to go. I wasn't into that sort of stuff. And my wife said, oh, we've got these tickets to go to this show hypnotherapist. I'm like, I don't want to go. And, and I'd just been away working. I just got back. And all the signals and signs were not to go because, as I've written in the book, it says it was a dark and stormy night. And it was. It was pouring with rain. Absolutely pissing down, actually. <laughs> so we're driving up. There was detours. We were late for this dinner we were to go to. And, and all the signs were there not to go to this show. Anyway, we arrived. And, of course, I was chosen to go up on stage as one of the people. <clears throat> and being a channel, I, I just go under like that. So we were on stage and we did all these normal things like become washing machines and you know, swim the Atlantic Ocean and you know, the sorts of things that show hypnotherapists you know, take you to. And he had an intermission, but he programmed us and he said that I want you to all come back on stage, those who were on previously. When you hear this piece of music, which was the James Bond, dun 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 sort of noise. And he said, when you come up on stage, you, you're going to be um, spies and you have to take all the KGB agents out of the room. So anyway, I went back into the audience and was sitting there talking to my friends, etc. And then this music came on and, and suddenly I stood up and, you know, started shooting and sliding under chairs and all this sort of stuff, you see. And I knew what I was doing, but I'm thinking, I can't stop doing what I'm doing. <laughs> and I felt like a complete dick, excuse the French. <laughs> anyway, everyone else was very sensible. They went up on the side stairs, you see. I'm, I'm going up the front, and I decided I'd leap up on the stage. So I did, and I actually broke my ankle and my leg. <laughs> but I didn't know it, because under the hypnosis, I didn't feel a thing. So I stood up, and I felt, I heard a click, and I just thought, I've twisted my ankle, you see. So I carried on with the show, and again, I didn't feel a thing. And then we were all sitting, there's eight of us sitting in a line, and we all had to do stupid things. And the stupid thing I had to do was with the hypnotherapist, I had to dance the lambada with him. So here I am, a broken leg and ankle, doing like this, <laughs> like this. Got back to the car. By this stage, the hypnotherapy was wearing off, and I could feel all this pain. So invariably, I ended up taking myself to the hospital. So they gave me triage, and the woman said, oh, no, you've just twisted your ankle. I said, no, it's something worse than that. And she said, no, no, no. So they sat me in a wheelchair, and I sat there for about four hours. Finally, about two in the morning, I got into x-ray, and the x-ray and the surgeon comes out and goes, have you broken your ankle and your tibia? You have to spend three days in hospital. We have to put a pin through you. Anyway, so I was in this room, and there's an older man who is near the window side, but the curtains were closed. And in the whole three days that I was there, I never saw him, but I heard him. And we had these conversations for three days. You know, talking about, you know, how to pee in bed when you're lying down. <clears throat> <laughs> and all sorts of things. He'd been a World War II pilot in, in England in the Battle of Britain. He was 90-something. And so we just had this extraordinary connection, this relationship over three days, but I never saw him. It was just this whole sense of communication just through just hearing somebody. And finally came to the day where I was to go. His name was Laurie. And I said to him through the curtain, well, it's my, my time to go, I'm going to go. And this gnarled hand came up from between the curtains and just took my hand. That's all I ever saw of him. And he said, I couldn't have chosen a better roommate. I mean, he's probably in spirit now. But it was so poignant because it makes me realize that we get so distracted by what we see. And because I was only listening and we were just talking, we were a vibration, but as a vibration, we created this extraordinary relationship. And it just made me realize how much we distract ourselves through 
the visual concept of life, whether it's people or what we see around us. You know, I was just outside, just catching a bit of air before I <clears throat> started. I just closed my eyes and just felt the sun on me and just smelt the, the air around me and listened to people. And we see so much more when we're not looking. And we're often looking too, too much, I think. And, and Tabash has often said, it's often what you don't do that allows you to find the answer. And so that's where we have to, you know, from my observations at this time in history, we're having to learn how to stand still and do nothing. Again, as Mr. T says, in order to be something, we have to know what it is to do nothing. And when we do nothing, that's when we stand still and are able to see with our souls. So someone like Tabash, that's what he's doing. He's teaching us to see with our souls. Have fun. Enjoy. Listen. Just be yourselves. Enjoy the experience. So what I'll do now is I'll um, sit down. And it doesn't take long. Up to 20 seconds is the uh, usual length of time it takes to bring Mr. T through. That's what I call him. <laughs> so, some people just call him T man. Hey, T. <laughs> so I'll talk to you later. Um, when I come back afterwards, I'll probably be a bit zonky. So you know, just give me a bit of, bit of time. And uh, I'll see you guys later. I am Tabash. <clears throat> because you are here, you are here because you have a need to know more of you. But then you already know everything about you. And when you come to things like this, you come to things like this because you know, and you want to know more on a conscious level. Knowing on a conscious level is a grand experience, but it's also quite a challenge. Because what you're doing is you're putting a light on yourself. And when you put a light on yourself, you do that because you want to see more of who you are. And you want to see more of who you are because you know that you are more than who you are. And each life that you live is an opportunity to know that you are God. In your bodies, once again creating. And I tell you this, there's absolutely no reason why you're doing it. You're doing it because it's what you do. I think it was in a Sedona where someone put their hand up and said to me, Tabash, what is the purpose of our lives? What is the reason for our existence? And I said, you do not have one. Nobody does. And of course, everyone sort of went, huh? And then they said, well, what's this all about? And I said this, I said, what do you want it to be about? What would you like to feel? What would you like to experience? What would you like to think? Feel. How do you want your lives to be? Your relationships to be? Your emotions to be? How much money do you want in your bank account? How do you want your well-being to be? That's how it works. You're the ones who make the decisions. When you get involved in a purpose or an identity, that puts a lot of pressure on you. 
When you live your life, hey, I'm a God in a body creating life. It's Sunday. That's how life works. People are too investing in what's happened or what's going to happen. They forget to invest in what is happening. And what is happening right now is where all the power of who you are is. You find the power in your present. Because that's where you're living. The past is where you used to live. And the future is just a possibility of where you will live. Over there, there's no power. What well, over there was, there's no power either. Where you are is where the power is. So what is it in human nature that wants to go to a place where there was no power? And that's where people get so confused. Thinking that over there is better, or behind them is better. I don't want to live where I'm living. I don't want to experience what I'm experiencing. Well, Tabash, how do I change my life? Stand still and be present. And acknowledge and accept that whatever you are experiencing is important. But it makes me hurt or it pains me too much or it makes me miserable. And I say, well, yeah, that's why you're there. Because you wanted to experience those vibrations, those feelings, those attitudes, those ideas. But if you're only involving yourself in your human nature, of course, it's going to hurt a lot more. But if you're allowing yourself to invest in your God nature at the same time, then your God nature is going to give you an indicator about what this is all about. And then you're able to direct your human nature in greater ways. And all of you know that. All of you, with your interest in the development of self, know that. And it is that development that's encouraging you to investigate further more of yourselves. Because you are, as Geraldine was explaining earlier, multidimensional beings of consciousness. Brings a whole new meaning to finding yourself, doesn't it? Because <laughs> that is what you're doing. You're looking daily at which self shall I find today? What way will I need to explore who I am? And the other thing too is that when you find yourself involved in the self that no longer serves you, then what happens is that you discover another self that serves you better. But man, do you fight it. You have this big tug of war that's going on. Oh, but I've always known that self. I'm so familiar with it. Even when it serves against you. Even when it's the worst part of you that you can possibly imagine. People create a security around what was. Even though they do not like it. Because it's what they're familiar with. But isn't it a great thing that you can become familiar with something different, something new? And again, this is what humanity is doing. It is creating a new form of familiarity that is engaging you in an opportunity to decide about yourselves. Remember, you're not finding yourselves. You are really deciding something about yourself. And the moment you make a new decision, then what you're doing is you're engaging in a new vibration. And then you take that vibration and you make the decision about the way that you actually want to invest it. I get back to that spotlight. When you have the spotlight on yourself, you can't escape what you see. A lot of people, when they have the spotlight on themselves, will say, turn that light off, I don't want to see. Because it's showing you you. Isn't that the whole idea about why you're involving yourself in anything? You want to show yourself to yourself. To change things is not an arduous task. To change things, it's about acceptance. I accept who I am. I accept where I stand. I accept what I feel. And then from that point, you begin to look at how can I rearrange this vibration? to change things, to make things more profitable for me. Human nature has put up with an awful lot through its history. But that is what they decided to create. And now you are creating something very different. And when you create something very different, you do have to change the rules. And the rules are changing. 
in the most massive way, mind, body, and spirit that you could possibly imagine. Human nature gets very down in regards to what occurs sometimes. And they begin overwhelmed. How can we make these shifts and changes when so much is going on around? They feel helpless, powerless to the circumstances around them. But we say this to you as gods. It's not as bad as you think. Human nature gets so involved in the ideas and the human emotions. So of course you're going to be weighed down by the human experience. And when you get weighed down by the human experience, it sucks. It really does because you feel the weight of it. You, you, it doesn't make sense when you look at all the conflicts and the traumas that are going around. So what you do is that you just go to the part of you that knows. You go to the God in you. And when you go to the God in you, then you're able to see it differently, feel it differently, experience it differently. And then by doing that, you're able to f understand that there's this rather grand scheme that's actually going on. And each individual is a very integral part of the formula of consciousness and the evolution. So you're all highly responsible for the well-being of not just yourself, but of each other and what occurs, whether it is in your own area you live in or your country or your continent or this world itself. And the more that as souls you get that, the better things become. But when people feel that they are powerless to make the changes that are needing to be made, well then nothing happens. Or if it does happen, it happens slowly. So if you all take responsibility, and when I'm talking about responsibility, I'm not talking about join a cause or find a way. I'm talking about as individual souls, you waking up every morning and realizing that, yes, I am the one who's going to make a difference to this planet today. I am the one who's going to make it all change by simply living myself, my truth, what makes sense to me. No right way, no wrong way, just your way. Remember, no purpose. No purpose. Just decide. And if you know yourself, then you know that within you, you possess all these amazing qualities to experience life. Yes, And there's nothing wrong with being lazy about things. But don't forget, you set up a road on for yourself called your life. And you decided that road. You decided your qualities. You decided your power. So it's about how do I do the driving? And, and no one else can tell you what to think or what to feel or what to be or what to do. Only you can actually do that. But what you will have in your life is you will have souls who will become your teachers and your mentors or reminders to say, look at this or check this out. But listen to your instincts. You're both very feeling people. You're in your head too much, so. So when you get in your head too much, then you know you could overthink. If you overthink, then it's at the cost of what you feel. You're a very feeling, very intuitive person, very creative man. So it's about using the vibrations. Use your power, but inspire each other as well. Does that make sense? Will you do something with it? We will watch. You know, and this is what you have to do. You have to look at it from a point of it is life. And people get so involved in the weight of it as opposed to the joy of it. You know, when you look at, you know, what I call the misery gut stuff, what you have to remember is that you've got to step back. Otherwise, you can get too emotionally involved in what's occurring. When you step back, then what do you do? You're able to observe it. So yes, by all means, have your human experience because that's a part of it. But then as you discovered, you had to step back and you go, hang on a minute, there's something bigger going on here. Now what's the God in me doing about this? You might not necessarily use that word, but you know, you feel that this higher part of you is saying, yeah, this sucks. However, if you just make a little bit of organizing here or observe here or step back there, then what are you able to do is you're able to reorganize the vibrations and the energies. 
I've been doing a little bit of teaching recently on this concept of environments. Everything is an environment. So right now, this is an environment. This room, you all, you all created an environment right now. And you all have environments in your lives. You have intellectual ones, physical ones, spiritual ones, emotional ones, relationship environments, work environments. So you think about it, your whole life is completely involved in all different environments. And each environment possesses its own unique vibration. So your aim in your lifetime is to create the most harmonious and productive environments that you can. When you do not have an environment that don't, does not serve you, it's not that it is a wrong environment. It's just counterproductive to your evolution. There are two ways in regards to environments. You can either get yourself out of them or you reorganize them to suit your purposes better. So sometimes I think people are too premature in getting out of their environments, thinking that that's the only solution to their circumstances. But there are times when, like I said before, oh no, I'll just step back here for a moment and think, oh, maybe if I just organize it differently, then I can save myself an awful lot of hassle. I see this a lot in relationships with people, and there's a few here who should have stayed in their environments because it would have been more productive. But people think, no, I'm out of here. And so what they do, they take themselves away from a situation, whereas in the bigger picture of it, if they just observed, they would have thought, now hang on a minute, maybe if we just shift this a little bit or change that idea, communicate a little bit more, then you can actually reorganize the environment to serve your purposes. Now, if you think about this from a point of yourselves collectively, within you, you've got all these different environments that are going on at the moment. And all these environments are hopefully in a sort of level of collaboration with each other. So when you get a collaboration of environment, what occurs is that you get a collective consciousness that works together, supports itself, and therefore supports your life. And when you do not have environments that are not productive, you're not going to get that collaboration. So therefore, you do not have a vibration, a frequency that supports your life. And this is how people get into misery gut stuff. This is how you get into your fears and your doubts and your worries. Because you're involved in environments that do not serve you. So to be able to reorganize your environments within yourself is really what self-development is all about. You're developing the ability to establish environment in yourself, so therefore your vibration alters to a frequency that aligns you to what you people call God, source power, universal consciousness, the light, whatever. You can call it Ethel if you want. <laughs> Dear Ethel. <clears throat> As individuals who are involved in their development, you have created within yourself a task. And this task is to develop an environment which is going to be able to literally save life, save the planet, save the world, whatever you want to say. And so you only need to look no further than yourself. So when you go to that, then what happens is that you will turn a light on within yourself. And when you turn a light on within yourself and you see what you see, and then you decide what you're going to do with what you see. But your response to what you see is very interesting because it is your response that tells you about your belief systems. And so when you think about any way you react, your response tells you about yourself. Whether that's positive, negative, with a person, a situation, the circumstances, a place, that will tell you something about yourself. That's why you can get somebody who gets terribly dramatic about something when things occur. And another person stays very calm. And some people stay indifferent. And that's just an indicator about that individual, their personality self. No one is wrong. No one is right. But when you know yourself, you understand your responses. And you know that if you're giving out a response that's not productive to you, then that's when you'd have to look at yourself and think, okay, what's a different way I could approach that? And it depends entirely on the person or the circumstances or the situation. So that's where no one can have some sort of stock program that you're programmed for the same response all of the time. You're changing that consistently. 
and, and, and as you change it consistently, what are you doing is that you're changing your vibration. As you discover, you know, monsieur. And, and so, so when you shift your vibration, what have you done? But you've opened up to the realms of, of other possibilities. And well done you. You know, because you followed your soul. And when you followed your soul, your heart was filled up with the steps that you needed to take. And what it's done, it's opened up more of consciousness for you. But as you know, it's also set you up on a road where it's allowed you to feel the power through you more and more. And that's where you're deciding what you're going to do with it. Don't be too much of a hurry. You know, because that God in you is going to direct you, basically, see. And so all the, all the prayers, all the incantations, all the energy that you're working with at this particular point is establishing a new formula. You have created a new environment. But what you also have to learn, this is the next point that's important, is to know when to really say bye to what was. Because you don't want to be influenced by what was. And as you discover, sometimes that's people. And, and, and because they just don't relate to the, to the different vibration. You know, people can make moves in their lives, spiritually, mentally, physically, whatever. But they're still dragging around what was with them. And I don't think it's a hard thing to put something down, but people argue about it. You know, but I've been through this, and, and this is what's happened to me, and all that sort of stuff. And with all due respect, so what? You're gods. It's Sunday. You have the power of life with you all the time. And what do you want to do? You want to focus on the fact that your grade four teacher put you in detention, and you were traumatized by the event? You had to have therapy about it, and now you're 67? <laughs> That's what happens. See, this is the time in your human history where the biggest logo you could possibly have is put it down, leave it alone. Whatever you pay attention to will become your life. The more you think it, the more you feel it, the more you experience it, it will become your life. And yeah, sometimes what you've been through is traumatic and awful. But when you look at yourselves as individuals who are moving forward, then that means that there's something about you that says it's about moving forward. That's why you're doing it. It's like, oh, hang on a minute. You know, that's what people do. You know, I just, what are you doing? I just forgot my misery. I just had to go back and get it. <laughs> Oh, okay. And this is what you do. You make friends with your misery stuff, you see. It's always, if you, it's, it's always going to be there. So what is it going to do? It's going to keep waving at you. And if you wave back at it, then it thinks it's your best friend. So it's going to keep on finding ways of getting your attention, you see. Whereas if you sort of think, no, I'm sorry, I'm not your best friend now. I've, I've de-Facebooked you or whatever you people do. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that it's bad or wrong. So don't make an enemy of what was. It's about the acceptance of everything. But you are not who you were over there. You are who you are now. I mean, it's quite extraordinary when you think about it. You just sit here and your body is listening to me. <clears throat> you are these omnipotent, powerful beings of consciousness who are right now carrying the secrets of the universe, as you people would say. The answer to all existence is right now with you in this room, within you. And as you live your life, you're simply discovering that and, and evolving with that. And then when you find a eureka moment, you, you realize the need to make a major gear change. And then something shifts in your consciousness. And all of a sudden, what was just doesn't have the same relevance anymore. And it's not because it's finished. It's just that it's not necessary anymore. Because nothing finishes. It just is the ongoingness of, of everything. You're just consciousness, living in bodies, living in bodies. And as you discover more and more of the ability to be multidimensional consciously, then it shifts the dynamics of your attention. 
So it's just really what you pay attention to. And, and, and so, you know, people, when I said that, people have often said to me, oh, Tabash, you know, I want to see spirit all the time. And I said, what do you want to do that for? It'd be so distracting. You know, you're in a beautiful restaurant and you having a nice meal and you're talking to a nice person or you're at a concert or somewhere and all of a sudden you're seeing spirit all the time. You know, it would be distressing, distracting. It's always there. But it's never created so that therefore you see it all of the time. And when people say to me, I want to know more. You know, tell me how do I need to know more? I say, well, be God. You, you know more already. I'll tell you a funny story. <clears throat> so Blair was driving along one day and he was feeling a bit sort of flat like this, you see. And Blair's wife lives in a care home. She has Alzheimer's. So she's been in there three years. So he's just feeling a bit. And he says to Spirit, he says to us, hey, you guys, I feel a bit flat. What can I do? Help me. So we said to him, be God more. So he's driving a long game. Great. Be God more. <laughs> Rolls his eyes. <laughs> anyway, so he carried on being grumpy. Went to bed, woke up thinking, no, hang on a minute. I know better than this. So he put his thought out to his higher nature. And he said to his higher nature, today how can I be God more? And his higher nature said, well, you've got a day off. It's summer. It's a beautiful day. Why don't you just hang around your home? Do your garden. Do your housework. All that sort of thing. So he's doing that. And then he had a linen shirt that he needed to iron. And at the same time, he thought he'd ring up Lenny, who's in the audience here, who's in New York. So he'd prop the phone up, and he's ironing away like this, you see. And all of a sudden, he's talking to Leonard, and he says to Leonard, I'm being God more. And Leonard goes, what do you mean? And he knows about this stuff, so. So Blair told him, and then Blair thought to himself, this is how it works. You just find it in life. You just find it in what you people call stuff. You don't have to find being God more and some big meditation or some great book or some revelation. You find it in ironing your linen shirts. Or you find it in pulling a weed from your garden. Or doing a vacuuming. Or doing just life stuff. That's how you find being God more sometimes. And yeah, sometimes high nature may have said, oh, you got to read that book or do that meditation or whatever. But on that day it said, oh, just do your housework and just do your garden. Do those things. That's how you find God more. Because what are you doing is that it, your intention is I'm God doing this. I am the power of life doing this. I'm the one with all the answers. I don't have to find a thing. I just need to keep practicing it. And sometimes the best way to practice it is when you're driving to work, when you're just doing your gym workout or your yoga class, or whatever the case is, that's how you find it. Don't make life this big, important event all of the time because there's too much pressure on you. You know, the whole of your life is a development seminar, you know just by the way that you're actually living it. And when you're conscious, hey, I'm God living my life, walking down the road, sitting here, having my lunch, whatever. And the more you do that, the more you're aligning with source power. Till invariably, what do you end up doing? You end up training your body, training your mind to direct the spirit through you in a more conscious way. And you might do that by sitting at your computer in your office, just knowing that you're God doing it. Or pushing the trolley when you're at the supermarket, putting your Cheerios in, or whatever you eat. And, and so, oh, what you're eating, your attitude towards what you're eating. It, it's all about what is the decision that I have to make about myself that's going to determine where I go from here. People are looking always for the rules. They say to us constantly, you know, what's the structure? What's the system? Tell me what to do. You know? But, but no one can do that. But yes, you will be guided and directed and mentored and all that sort of stuff. But nobody will say anything to you about what to do because only you can do that. And when you align with a belief system or a concept that resonates to you, it's like, yeah, that resonates to me. And then that's when people go, oh, I went and saw Tabash and he said something. That resonated to me. And then they go, oh, Tabash, you know, told me what to do. No, he didn't. He just resonated. Vibration. Intention, 
What is your intention? Powerful souls, powerful beings of consciousness. Just think about it. What is your intention? Because everything is a vibration. And don't forget that as souls, you're consistently looking out for each other as a vibration. So, Veronica is it? Yeah. So with Veronica, you know, in some way, she healed all you in some way because of her energy and her pain, but her recovery and her moving forward allowed you all to move forward in some way. So it's actually interesting. We think about the collective consciousness of things. The only reason that you actually ever came here today is you wanted to make a link with Veronica as much as you all want to make a link with each other. So you all sort out each other's frequencies and energies because you've known each other for decades. You've been following each other's experiences around, whether you know it or not. And it's interesting, you think about when you meet up with people and you think, I know you. And it's not that you've never met them before. But remember, your soul's gone on a few wanders out there. And, and when it goes on these wanders, you know, it makes these links. And then suddenly you do get situations where suddenly you meet up with that very person. And it's like, I know you. I know your connection. Or, or you know, your soul just links in just to pass the time of day with each other sometimes because you seek for your soul family. You seek for what's familiar to you. You seek for the souls that you love. And, and that feeds you. You're being fed all of the time. And not just from a point of love, but you seek out for souls that will stimulate you intellectually. And that's where sometimes an idea comes your way. And you say, where did that come from? Well, someone in Baltimore that you connected up with sent that to you at some point. And you might live in South Africa. But the thing is, this is what happens. You're always aligning yourself with consciousness all the time. Because life is this cornucopia of opportunity that you want to dip into. And that's where survival comes from sometimes. So it's not just from what you people say, your guides. It's actually from consciousness. You're dipping into life all of the time. So in life around this planet, there's a lot of love, there's a lot of courage, there's a lot of bravery, there's a lot of survival vibration, there's a lot of insight, there's a lot of you know, motivation, etc. that you're tapping into all of the time. So where does it all come from? Life. Now whether you say it's from spirit or whether it's from someone in, in Botswana or whatever, it's just come from life. And you are life and, and you're being tapped into all of the time too. Now if that can work in a positive way, it can also work in a negative way too. You know, people have a phrase that goes, like attracts like. So when you get into your misery gut stuff, often what occurs, and I've seen people you know, in this audience do that, you bring other people who are miserable around you. So you can all be miserable together. <laughs> and just wallow in your misery. And, and talk about it and share it. And, you know, oh, yes, oh I remember. You know, oh, I forgot that. Oh, I remember how miserable I was. Oh, yeah, I was miserable too. Now, my miserable was better than yours. <laughs> people love to share stories, even though they're, even though they're miserable ones. <clears throat> So that's why when you make a decision to turn a light on, you realize the vibration of misery guts is not productive, not just to you, but to each other as well. I mean, it's, it's like sitting next to someone who hasn't had a bath for weeks and months or whatever, and, and there's this big circle around them because you don't want to sit next to them because they smell. Well, think about it as a vibration. You might smell sometimes. People don't want to sit next to you because of your vibration and your frequency. So that's why it's good as a soul to be clear, to be clean, to, to align your energies very, very specifically so that therefore you always have that right formula. In other words, getting back to what I said before, you always had the right environment that you're wanting to establish. So this is why as souls you have to decide collectively what you want your environment to be like. And that's why finding like-minded individuals is such an important thing for you to be involved in. And some of you will do it in a very, very conscious way. And some of you will do it very quietly. But whatever way you do it, you have to do it in a way that feels right for yourself. And what we will do is that we will come and remind you 
through ideas or through feelings. He would just get it. People are often thinking about what do I need to be or need to do? Again, it just comes down to be in the present and don't have a need to be anything. I think there's a lot of freedom in being nothing. I know in human nature terms, people, they try to identify with themselves. But in the big picture of it, it's actually about being nothing. Who needs a label? I mean, yes, you have all your labels on your name because that's the name of your body. But that's not who you are. And so when you look at yourself, you have to ask yourself, how do you define yourself? And is it that the way I want to define myself? So as you're all developing, what you're doing is that you're creating a new freedom, a freedom away from, we'll say, your human nature, and therefore a freedom in embracing consciousness, life without any form of true nature, for what really is that? The people say to me often, what does God think? I say, God never thinks. It's impossible for God to think. God's just in a state of being. What is God, people say to me? God is the most supreme way you experience life. So that's why everything and everybody is God. So God is a, a living consciousness which you are all not a part of, but all are. So God gave you what it is. So that's why you have all the same power, all the same ability. That's why when I say you are God, and you accept that, then you are accepting that you have that power. If you say I'm a part of God, then that means you'll have a part of the power. So this is an important thing. You want it all. So. If you want it all, you have to accept that you are it all. And I know a lot of people struggle with that concept, but they only struggle with that because of old belief systems. So this time in history is about flicking off the old systems and realizing that in fact there is no system. There just is, just life. You know, again what I said before, in order to be something you have to know what it is to be nothing. So it is your nothingness that you are exploring at this particular point. And when you are exploring your nothingness is where you're engaging with everything. Because that's how you go to the God in you. Not your human ideas, not your human emotions, nothing to do with your human nature. God has nothing to do with your human nature. What it's got to do with is just, just life. So therefore, when you find that part of you that goes deep within, that's when you are able to find the God in you, basically, see. People get so distracted by what might happen or what could happen or what's out there. And, and life is not a destination. Life is an experience that you're actually having. So through those experiences, it just made you, well, obviously get stronger, but <clears throat> you learned how to say no more. And, and, and you also learned that you had to do it. And, and as much as you had people that were there supporting you sometimes, you realize that a lot of the time you didn't need that, that you need to support your vibrations and energies and then carefully take those steps and then create what you needed to create. <clears throat> this thing of where am I going with all of this, I think is also a distraction. It's more I'm feeling this, I'm thinking this, I'm doing something with this. Is this taking me somewhere? And of course, you're the one who decides where it's taking you. So that's where I'm not saying don't have a concept of a future, but just don't let your future distract you because the future is only a possibility. As I always say to people, everybody has lots of futures and your future is defined by your present by your present thoughts, belief systems, experiences. And that's just a starting point for a whole lot of other possibilities. So if you think about your life right now, 
You're just standing in your life right now. And so you might look around you and think, well, where could I go with this? And, and when you look at that, you're going to get senses of what is possible for you. And then there are times when you might sort of feel something. You go, well, that's impossible. I couldn't possibly see how that could occur or how that could happen. And yet it did. Because you invested at some point in standing still and listening to the possibilities of what were before you. And that's why you're still alive. Because you stood still and you allowed yourself to just make a decision. And, and when you make decisions about life, you also create a responsibility for that decision that you've actually made. Because you've initiated a process of creation when you get into that point. And creation consciousness is a very interesting vibration. To know it absolutely, you have to acknowledge the freedom that you are, the God that you are, and then you have to look consciously at what you would term your natural intentions. Hold strong onto the idea of what you want to create. And then every day, find ways of supporting that idea through your thoughts, through your actions, through the way you're participating in life, until invariably you get the result. And once you get the result, well, then that just becomes another starting point for yet more creation. And it just on goes. And that's why, as I said, there's no end to anything. But what occurs is that you move away from certain environments. So suddenly that environment is no longer conducive. And I'm even talking about positive environments that you have to move away from. Why would I want to move away from something that makes me feel good? Because there's something that's going to make you feel even better. And, and, and this is the other thing. People can hold on to a happiness, not believing that there's even greater happiness. And, and, and they, they hold on to an idea of something because it, it just represents something to them. But they have to know when to let that idea go so that they can bring a new idea in. And I remember years and years ago, you know, in the 80s when they had the big stock market crash, and, and this lady comes to me and she says, oh, Tobias, she says, you know, I lost all this money and yet I know I can make more money. I've got it in me to do so. And she said, why is this not happening? And I said, it's because of what you said at the time when you lost your money. And she said, well, what was that? I said, you said, I'm never going to be in this position ever again. And I said, oh, she said, but that meant, you know, I don't want to lose my money again. But I said, well, never means never. And she sort of went, oh. The you know, light went on. And she said, well, how do I change this? And I said, just put it down. So she put that down. And within six months, she'd made all the money she'd lost and more. Because she'd allowed herself to realize, oh, I have a choice here. So it's that freedom thing again. So it's that whole energy of by holding on to an old concept or a belief system. You know, that's why you've got to be careful about what you're saying to yourself. Because what you say sticks. You can still change it. But how many years is it going to take for you to do that? Or decades or lifetimes before you can make these changes? You need to be very honest with yourselves at this particular time in history. Is a concept humans have, which is like, oh, you're all on your own now. Sometimes it feels like that, and sometimes it's good to feel that way. Because there are times when it's more about the influence that you have on yourself rather than who's influencing you. And I think people can end up listening too much to too much and seeking for answers and solutions to things. When you stand still <clears throat> and listen to you, then what that will do is that will engage you in how to be directed towards the right situation, the right mentor, the right book, or whatever you people say. 
It's literally about allowing yourself to think, okay, having stood still, quieted within myself, then I'm going to be able to move into an authentic vibration that's going to attract towards me exactly what I needed at the time when I needed it. And that's why it's not about oh, what do I have to look for. It's more, what am I doing? And with what I'm doing, am I encouraging myself into the best vibration, into the best energy? Living in a time in history where things can be so distracting to everybody. It's so important to look at what is attractive to you in your mind, in your bodies, in your spirits. You've all heard, of course, of the law of attraction. Information that you give is very, very important at this time in your life. As I was saying before, when you as God inform your human nature about your intentions, the human nature in you will absorb this information and by doing so, it will formulate a plan. It will formulate an experience. But you need to be consistent in the information that you're giving to your human nature. For if you give it a bit here and a bit there, then how is it that the human nature can formulate a plan when it only has bits and bobs of things? So when you are as God's consistent in speaking to your human nature. Oh, mind self, this is how I need you to think now. Body self, this is how I choose you to be. Spirit self, this is how I choose you to engage. If you're consistent with that, then the information that your human nature is getting is allowing itself to create a formula. And then invariably, you get the goods. But people get bored, distracted, or they think it's not happening fast enough. So after a day or two or a week or two, they stop doing it. Oh, it didn't work. You can't create with time. You just create. You live in a moment. You live in a moment, you're able to project to your human nature through the way you think, through the way you feel, through the way you live, your intentions. And you will get the result if you stick with it. You know, it's like anything that you people do when you make changes in your life, or whether you train at the gym, or you study something, cook something, you want a result. But you've got to pay attention to what the formula is consistently to get the result. And when you live in a time in history where Everything wants, everybody wants everything instantly. Then, of course, it makes people impatient, which sends out the wrong vibration, which creates a weird environment. So it's very much about, okay, I've got to be able to explain to my human nature, this is the situation. This is the idea that I have. This is the feeling I have. This is what I want you to do. And as you keep doing that, then the human nature goes, oh, is that what you want? Oh, okay, why didn't you tell me? And this is what the human nature is wanting from your God nature. The human nature wants the God nature to give it information. Now you can do that just in the day-to-day, -day, in your thoughts. You don't have to do it in a big meditative state. You, 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 you tell, you know, you're going to go to lunch soon, and your human nature needs you to know, well, what are we going to do with this? So your God nature says, all right, well, this is what I'm having for, for lunch, and this is how I want you to digest it. I mean, people say this unconsciously. Oh, I'm going to go for a walk now, you say to yourself. So you're informing your life. Oh, I've got this exam coming up. I need to study. You're telling your human nature. So if you do this more consciously, what are you doing? You're directing source power to work for you. And, and if you're consistent with this, and you're also training your system up, into knowing that this is normal, this is natural. So after a while, you don't actually have to do it so consciously because you've aligned your mind and body and spirit to such a level where it just knows. So you've created this collaboration, using that word again, 
of, of consciousness, of vibration. And then you just have to occasionally visit it and just, oh yeah, well done, human nature, right? Um, but to change the story again, but well done. And this is it. Think about how many times you've changed the story in your life, but you didn't tell your human nature that you did. And it took a while for your human nature to get the concept or the pattern or the vibration. And then eventually the changes came about. But change could come about much faster if you're allowing yourself to give that information and stay consistent with that information. And then as you see results, don't stop giving the information. You've got to keep at it and at it and at it till you get the result that you want. And then once you've done that, you as God got to say to human nature, well done. Thank you so much for what you've done for me. I appreciate it. Now let's do more. And, and, and so it's always building, building, building on that vibration and that energy. Remember, you are God's in bodies and you are already powerful. You do not need to look for the power. You just got to realize that you're standing in the midst of it. And what am I going to do with this power now? What makes the most sense to me right now? And, and by standing in that position, then of course you'll be offered up the views of other possibilities but don't get distracted by them when you see them see them oh yeah i could see those okay now let's put my attention back here otherwise you're just going to get into the concept of when are we going to get there and 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 again i would just say well you will but what is the road that you're going to create for yourself to actually to get to that particular place so the systems physiologically, mentally, emotionally, these environments are in such a progressive energy at this time. And, and some are catching up with it faster than others. But to allow oneself to stay aligned to that vibration, it's got to be a day-to-day -day informative experience. You got to tell your life every day. And so, try to practice this. So through your lunch break and things like that, give information. So right, your energies are flagging. You're thinking too much. You need to eat foods and empty your bodies. So I'll, I'll talk to you in the afternoon. Thank you. I'll bring Blair back.